Greetings. The needs of today's students are impossible to really ascertain due to the unprecedented astronomical rate of technology and change that accelerates constantly. We cannot be sure if tomorrow artificial intelligence will not completely revamp education as the internet combined with unmerited lockdowns have changed it drastically within just the past two years. As schools reopen all over the world, teachers and administrative staff report great difficulties in student adjustment and engagement. They are psychologically disturbed due to having been in solitary confinement due to a crime committed by the powers that be. What we must focus on is what will never change and is most in dire need, the social and emotional aspects of every student. This is the foundation of everything else in academia, including student performance. We would be better off having a world of less academically inclined people who have the ability to think reasonably and care about their fellow creatures in the world than to have a bunch of automatons with great academic ability that cannot be distinguished from their AI counterparts due to similar lack of humanity. Although some aspects of the purpose of schooling may change in terms of what may be desired by society or those that govern, the true purpose of education will always be present, and that is to assist every student to reach their full human potential, to self-actualize per se. It is not so much in the army, but in education, where one is meant to be all that you can be. The purpose of schooling should be to make more ethical human beings, not products of society that produce mindlessly until they first question what it was all for on their deathbed. Academically, the purpose should be to provide students with those skills that they already have a predilection for. The learning environment should reflect this and the students within. Montessori does very well to make a childlike environment with child-sized furniture and whatnot. However, it lacks a little of the magic and imagination that appeals to a child. It really just seems sometimes like a miniature version of an adult home. The old school McDonald's with parks built right into the restaurant, cutouts of cartoon characters, happy meals, and surprise toys that came with them all have to do with why every child used to beg their parents to take them there. Imagine a school that did something similar. Schools still, even Montessori, market themselves primarily to parents when they ought to be marketing themselves to students, especially those in early childhood education. Regardless of age, far more time ought to be spent outdoors or on field trips, for someone who has only explored the world in a classroom has not explored the world at all. A lot of what is taught in class could be better taught outside, from animals, plants, astronomy, history, aquatic life, to mythology, in the environments that support them. For example, if a class was taken to Six Flags over Mexico City, they would encounter a roller coaster called Medusa. In that context, students will be far more eager to learn about the myth. Students cannot be merely another brick in the wall if they were not constantly surrounded by walls. Although technology is advancing and much is being done online, humanity need not be a slave to trends. Teachers should limit technology, especially in early childhood education, and gradually expose them to it over time. They should acquire the necessary skills of technology without becoming consumed by it. I believe wholeheartedly in the growth mindset that every student is a diamond in the rough and a potential shining star. Teachers should facilitate what is already there and consider themselves servants rather than figures of authority. If the entire focus of education is not on what is in the absolute best interest of the students, undefined by our own terms, then education is not education but a spirit-stifling mind grinder. Teachers should lead by example in being creative themselves, not relying exclusively on materials they did not design. They should write their own books, songs, plays, and come up with their own games. Early childhood education teachers should be a little more like Pee Wee Herman and Ernest P. Worrell, or at least like Mr. Rogers, all of whom lived in the world of the child, attracting students all over America to tune in and learn from these zany characters. An adult at a desk with a cup of coffee and apple and joining voice has never been the stage for a children's educational program, so why does the world expect them to tune into such a class structure or boring teacher in real life? Be knowledgeable, but be invigorating. Even in high school or university, we have met the difference between a teacher on autopilot and that teacher that brought life to their subject due to their genuine passion and engagement. Student choice should be foremost in curricula while ensuring that students are still learning a bit of everything they will need to know. 
if a student chooses to focus on history at the expense of mathematics, they ought to at least learn the basic calculations that will be crucial to them. A gentle push allows them to discover that they may like a subject more than they had thought. For most of mainstream educational history, students have had very little choice until they reach university. The opposite should be strived for. Curriculum itself should be designed in collaboration with students. This way, the needs of all students are met and the skills and competencies he's learned will be all of that which is actually necessary with the majority catering to the individual interests of the students who will master what appeals to them. Therein lies another purpose for education, enabling students not just to survive and produce but to excel. The community should be involved as students explore the world as their means of study. Wouldn't it be nice if the world became a little more like Sesame Street or Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood where students can ask adults right on the street about their professions and outlooks on life, learning not just from teachers but from the community itself. Parents who are enthusiastically involved on their time in fun and educational activities with their children indeed have a great impact on their performance as well as their emotional and social state of being. It is all the better when groups of parents organize said activities with the parents and children of friends inviting teachers along. Now more than ever, students will need to be encouraged by everyone in that the future is becoming all the more obscure, requiring all the more faith that a destination will be found if they just keep driving forward through the fog.